Hey everyone, I uh, wanted to do this quick little video to kind of walk you through how you might set up a remote environment for doing development uh, using uh, Node and React, as well as uh, using uh, an EC2 instance on AWS as your server. Uh, so the first thing you want to do is log into the AWS console, and we're going to go ahead and create a new instance from here. So first thing we'll come up here, we'll select launch instance, and I'm just going to call this my React server. And I'm going to go down here, I'm going to pick the Amazon Linux uh, quick start here. I'm going to come down, leave all that the same. I'm just going to make it a little bigger. I'm going to pick the T2 medium, and I'm going to select uh, a key pair. If you don't have a key pair, go ahead and create one. Uh, we'll need that because we're going to be using SSH uh, protocol in order to actually plug this into uh, VS Code. All right, so we'll leave that all the same there. I'm going to create a security group, and I'm going to make sure I enable SSH. I'm also going to enable HTTPS from the Internet and also HTTP. Uh, we're also going to add one additional one later on, but um, we'll come back to that. All right. Give myself a little bit more storage. So I'm gonna go ahead and make this 50 gig and uh, leave everything else the same and go ahead and launch that instance. And once that's launching, um, you'll be able to then connect in and continue the setup within AWS. Okay, uh, so the server is now running and still initializing, but we're able to continue on here. Uh, first thing we want to do is go down and select the server from our list of instances and go to the security group here for launch wizard 3. We are going to then edit these inbound rules and we're going to add one additional rule here and this is going to be a custom TCP rule for 3000 uh, which is the default uh, default port for React whenever you're doing development. So we're just going to kind of do that just so that we have access so we can actually run the React server on a different port number and be able to access it from the internet. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Go ahead and save those rules. And we're going to come back to the dashboard. And see it's running now. Okay, so now that we got that, the next thing we're going to do is confirm that we can actually SSH into uh, the server. Uh, because with VS Code, do remote debugging, it utilizes the SSH protocol. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So let's go back and bring up a bring up a command window on your workstation here, and go to wherever you have your PEM key. So you'll need that 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 PEM key uh, that you downloaded from AWS. So we're going to do an SSH here dash I, and we're going to put that dev key PEM in there. Uh, we also need to get the public IP, which reminds me I forgot one additional step that we want to do before we go any further. And that is we want to make sure that we set up a, a elastic IP so our IP doesn't change. So we're going to come down here to the elastic IPs and we're going to allocate a new one. Okay. And then once it's been allocated, we're then going to come down here and we're going to associate that elastic IP with our running instance which is going to be the React server one. Go ahead and select Associate, Associate. All right, come back over here to the EC2 dashboard and come down. Now that we have that associated, we'll come back to here and we'll go to Details and we should have a public DNS entry here uh, that'll be static. I mean, it won't change whenever we shut down the servers and bring them online. So that's the advantage of having Elastic IP. So we'll go ahead and take that public IP DNS, copy that to the clipboard. Then we're going to come back over to our command window and paste that in. And we're going to just confirm that we can connect in through SSH. So we're going to use the EC2 user account. All right, at sign and hit enter. Let's make sure I got that right. Let me just go back here real quick. 
and refresh. Seventy-four sixty-three. Just gonna make sure I get the right one there. Nope, it had changed. I must not have. I must not have waited for and refresh the page so that was the old IP so let's go ahead and replace that with the one that's we're using there there we go okay hit enter so we're gonna get prompt there yes all right so we are connected in so we know now at this point that we have access uh, through SSH to to go into that server so the next step is going to be we're gonna go ahead and configure VS code in order to connect in and set up the remote remote development or debugging environment. We'll do that next. All right, I am now in Visual Studio Code and the first, first thing, if you haven't already had ex added this, go ahead and find the extension for remote development and it's the Visual Studio re re Code Remote Development Extension Pack. Go ahead and install that. That'll install a number of different components. Um, and that'll all give us the option to use SSH, SSH uh, to do remote development. So once we have that, we're going to come down here to the very bottom left here and select that option. And this is where we're going to be able to connect to the host and switch and do a couple different things as we're doing our development. But before we do that, we have to continue off, continue on setting up the connection. So we're going to open up the SSH configuration file and select the one that we're using, and I'm happy to be using this one. So in here is where you can define all your various remote sessions. So I'm gonna go ahead and uncomment the sample I have here. It doesn't matter what you call this, I'm just gonna call mine React, Remote React Development. You have to give it the IP address of the host, the user, and then your PEM file. So I need to go get the public IP. So I'm gonna come back over here to the AWS console and come down here and go ahead and select that copy that to the clipboard. That's our public IP. Come back in here and replace that. All right, and then I have to give it the location of my PEM file. Uh, my PEM file is actually stored in a different folder, so it's documents and AWS keys. And then it is, if I go back here and just to confirm, I call mine devkey.pem. So that's the location, just confirm the folder. So it's gonna be AWS keys in AWS, and then it's gonna be devkey.pem. So I'm gonna come down here, devkey.pem, go ahead and save all that. All right, now that I have that, I can come back down to the green option at the very bottom left, select it again and select connect to host. And then I have my option here to remote React Dev. Go ahead and select that. And you're gonna get an option here to continue. Make sure you select that, click continue. And it'll give it a second. It'll go ahead and, and set everything up. Once you're connected, as you see down here, it says remote, dev, remote React Dev, I'm connected. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and open up a terminal. And uh, this is actually a terminal inside of a remote server. So if I do a PWD, you can see that I'm actually on the Linux box now. And there's nothing in there. Okay, so we now have action. We have set up the remote development. The next step would be to go ahead and install Node and React and continue, continue on setting up our development environment. We'll do that next. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and install Node, and then after that we should be able to set up the React app the way we want to. So the first thing we have to do is we have to install the Node version manager. Okay, so the command to do that, you can get that from GitHub user account, um, and I'll paste this in the, the comments so you have access to it. We'll go ahead and install that, and then after that we're gonna go ahead and activate it. So we're gonna type in the following command, Sorry. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and, we're actually gonna go ahead and run it first. Activate it, so we don't wanna run that command. Once we install this and activate it, 
Now, once we have the Node version manager, this allows us to have different versions of Node. Uh, so we're going to be using version 16 because at the time of, of recording this, 16 is the latest version that is supported on the EC2 Linux instance. Okay, so if you install a later version, you're going to run into problems. So please make sure that you do an install of version 16. That will go ahead and install uh, what we need. Once we have that, we can should be able to say node version. See what version it is. We're on 16.19 npm version. And see what version we have of that. So we have 8.19, so we're good there. So now we have node installed. And now we have to go ahead and create our React app. So we're going to use the npx create React app. To do and hit enter that's going to go ahead and install all of the required packages that are needed for react development this may take a couple minutes as the prompt tells you once that finished will, finishes we will continue on with the remaining remaining steps okay once that finishes the install we are going to be at a point now that we should have a an empty react app uh, so if I do an ls on my terminal window here, you'll see that I have a to-do fol to folder. So I'm going to go ahead and cd into that. All right, and that will give us all of our files uh, that we have for React App. Uh, we can also come up here to the file menu and open folder. And you can kind of see that there's also, we have access to, to those remote folders. So we can select to do there as well and open. Uh, go ahead and select yes you trust the author here and now we've got our to-do directory with all of our node packages for react uh, set up for us so let's go back and reopen the terminal window here and let's go ahead and we're now in the to-do folder let's go ahead and do an npm start Let me go ahead and make this a little smaller here i also have my browser here so we can kind of see that so we can do npm start Start the development server. And there we have it. So uh, so what's nice about this is we can actually use local hosts. So it'll actually port for, forward, forward all that traffic through port 3000 to our local host, uh, which is kind of nice. So we also have access, just like you'd expect, that if we go over here to the source folder here and select our app.js, and let's go ahead and change this from Learn React on AWS. Go ahead and save that and we should see we should see the changes being reflected within the browser as we expect. So now you have it. You have uh, a, a working ver in development environment where you can do remote development and you don't have to put it on your, your local workstation. You can utilize the, the, the server there that you've set up um, one final thing we can do, just to confirm, is we can try to hit this from the internet. Since we opened up port 3000, let's give that a shot next. All right, so now we're going to go back into our AWS console and come up to the public DNS, copy that to the clipboard, come up here to the browser window, and go ahead and paste it in, and we got to have to put port 3000 there hit enter and there you have it so now you can you can also utilize it directly from the internet you're hosted on the internet uh, through that ec2 or that 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 link and you can also hit to hit it from localhost while it's running so there you have it so you now have a working development environment that allows you to quickly create Re react apps and work on them remotely. Thanks for watching and see you for the next video.